Sunday. Yeah. You want the fucking floor? You got the floor, motherfucker. Come here. I remember coming home in third grade. I was a latchkey kid and putting on records and kind of dancing around the room by myself till my mom got home. That was, nobody taught me how to do that. It was a natural thing. And really from third grade on, all I wanted for Christmas and birthdays were records. My first day of school, freshman year, I met Jenny because her locker was next to mine all four years. She was very involved in like the Future Farmers of America and the National Honor Society. She was first trumpet band, but she was also very different than all the other kids. That's where we lived. That, that's the parsonage. Drive around the corner. I never realized it was Liberty and Pleasant. Which, <laughs> which it certainly wasn't pleasant. <laughs> My graduating class had, I think, about 110, and uh, my brothers had 89 or so, so pretty small. She went to Ohio State, and we eventually moved in together. I took it out alone and bought her a keyboard, and she started writing these really sweet little songs. I had started working on a campus area uh, record store, an indie store. And so through that world, we got connected and then we were able to share her music with other people. She was sort of just known as like Crazy Jenny, this, you know, this bar girl who drank too much, who was pretty outrageous. And then people heard these songs and they were like, wow, well, fuck, where'd that come from? Um, how can that make this? <laughs> Jerry I met through the record store. He worked at this pizza place and he had long hair and he wore patchouli. And so he always smelled like tomato sauce and patchouli. And he was just a sweet guy. He didn't drink at that time. Janie and I had met him, like really bonded one night at Larry's. We had all these people being very creative, focused, and making great art and music. So it was gone, and then Jerry lived with the guys in the New Bomb Turks, and Used Kids was, the record store was the center of everything at that time. I mean, not just working there, but all the bands went there, you know, everyone met up there. It was almost like a like a drug dealer kind of thing. Like people had to, you had to get the music, and that's that's where you went. And then we had a great nightclub scene. You know, had Bernie's, and we had stashes, of course. But then there was Dick's Den and Crazy Mamas, and and all of that stuff within walking distance. And it was fun. We laughed a lot. But it, eventually, I think what happened was the sidecar of my drinking became the car and the music became the sidecar and the alcohol was what was driving my life for for a while is there anything to breathe in this dead world when you go the book is about jerry and jenny may and then myself as this person in the middle and they both died tragic deaths. Throughout their story, I survived and I got sober. And my life changed dramatically because of that. 
What's interesting about mental illness and addiction, when when we're that young, late teens, 20s, the behavior that goes along with it is sort of encouraged. But you don't really realize until you're through the other side of what was maybe going on with yourself and those around you. I mean, you don't think to yourself, well, I'm in love with somebody who's an alcoholic and I'm in love with somebody who's got schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. I have no idea. Until all of this shit happens and then you're like, what the fuck? And you start feeling those consequences in your life in your 30s, in your 40s, and you know, as, as I realize now, into your 50s, that, that you're dealing with that stuff. For me, it was being able, especially for Jenny, to tell her story. Her story wasn't just about a musician who made music who suffered from alcoholism. Her story was very much a part of, here was a brilliant person who was homeless for a long time and shouldn't have been, that the system failed her. with alcohol Each one throws the other up It's like canceling the game I think one of the most important things we can do is to connect. That's what makes everybody feel better. That's what makes us who we are. That's what music does. It connects us. To something else and being able to be a part of something where that connection was so easy and so easily given was pretty amazing. Um, I think the book talks a, a lot about that idea of self-reflection connection, of connecting to other people, and then what happens when that connection is cut off, of how that isolation of addiction, of mental illness, of economic class, removes people from that feeling of, of being connected. For me, music was the one, that was my community I found, even at 10, 11 years old, was like, oh, well fuck, I can, you know, I can listen to a song. I can listen to a Kiss record, or I can listen to a Beatles song, or, uh, you know, discovering the Ramones when I was in eighth grade. Like, what the fuck, wow. It's all rock, rock and roll high school. Like, well, holy shit, like, that looks fun. <laughs>